Uh, in this next block of videos in our video tutorial series, we're going to start taking a look at uh, some L system algorithms. So if you don't know what an L system is, it's kind of an algorithm of recursion that enables you to create um, kind of large intricate tree-like branching structures. So you can see in this image here, um, what's actually happening is starting with what you see is three vectors and they're essentially added onto the ends of each of the vectors um, iteratively and they're scaled down slightly until you kind of create a much larger um, tree transformation. So we're going to um, look at a really simple version of this before we jump into a um, slightly more complicated precedent study um, to do with L systems. So we're going to start with a new Grasshopper and Rhino file and basically what we want to do is similar to the image we were just looking at, we just want to create a couple of vectors um, or lines that we can then iterate um, to create our own branching algorithm. So we're going to start by going to the vector tab and creating a point using the construct point tool and I'm actually going to have a point at 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to hold down Alt and copy this one. And I'm going to copy it again. In fact, actually, I'll copy it again in a second because I want to create some sliders for um, this bottom one first. So I'm going to create a slider between 0. Um, oh, no, I want to create it between negative 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. I'll give it three decimal places. Sorry. Negative 1. 0, 0.000 and 1, like that. And I'm going to copy that slider. Oops. And I'm going to plug it into the point. And I might move it upwards in the y direction um, towards 1. And maybe we can have it um, slightly off to the side on the x coordinate. We'll just leave the z coordinate for now. Um, then I'm going to make a copy of this and I'm going to slide the x coordinate for the other one slightly in a different direction just make it a little bit shorter in the y. So we've basically just created you know, three arbitrary points using our construct point component and we could these could form the basis for our L tree. So maybe we just draw a line between two points um, which can be found in the curves tab. We'll go from the first point to the second then from that first point again to the third and you can kind of see we're starting to get our own kind of vectorized versions um, of an L system. So essentially what we want to do is we want to uh, copy this, these two lines that we've created and orient them onto the other end um, point of each of the other lines in a continuous loop to the, till the point we have like a much larger tree. So you can imagine right now we've got two endpoints. If we iterated this and put this on both of those endpoints, suddenly we'd have four endpoints because we, because we'd have four branches coming off the tree. And then if you iterate again, you'd have um, probably eight endpoints. I'm guessing, and it would just iteratively go up until we have a much more complicated uh, outcome on our screen. So, how are we going to do this? What we need to do is we need to find a way to orient these lines from this point to that point, but we want to maintain a direction. So what we want to do is we want to actually follow the normal of um, these lines using this vector. And what, to do that, we need to create um, a guide vector to do it. So the guide vector we're going to use is in the y-axis, we're going to work straight up this y-axis and we're going to orient from that. So basically what we're going to do is going to go in this direction and we're going to rotate that vector and put it onto the end so it points in this direction and that'll make a little bit more sense in a second. So I'm going to go and create a unit y vector um, and if you want to visualize this you could do a vector display if you're just a bit confused to what it looks like um, does it by default have something? We'll just input that base point. So we're basically orienting um, this vector onto the end of this point, but we want to go in this direction. So we're essentially going to be orienting and rotating a little bit. Um, so to do that, um, we're going to use the um, orient direction component, which is right here. Uh, it can be found under transformation. 
um, under the Athene tab, uh, Affine tab, so Orient Direction right under box mapping. And what the Orient Direction tool you, uh, asks us to do is it asks for a base geometry, um, which is quite common obviously, a reference point, um, a reference direction. So obviously our reference point is going to be 0, 0, and our reference direction is going to be this on the Y axis. Then it's going to ask for a target point, which will be these two points here, and it's asking us for a target direction, which is actually going to be a continuation of this vector, and then a continuation of this vector. So we need to make sure we get our lists right with that, because we want this vector to align to this point, and this vector to align to this point. So. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to get these two lines into their own line list container. So we'll get the top one first, hold down shift and put the bottom one in the second. Um, and I'll just preview that off. And then we're going to create a uh, vector between two points, vector two point there. That can obviously be found under the vector tab in the vector drop down menu. Um, there it is there. And we're going to go from, oops, we're going to go to create a vector from this point to uh, this point, and then this point to this point. So I'll go from starting point to there, and already going from the starting point, I'll override it with this one. Um, and then we're going to um, put these two vectors into their own little vector container, like this. Um, and we are also going to create a double point container as well for these two points. This one and this one like that. Then we can preview some of this stuff off. So the geometry we want to orient is obviously our two lines. So we'll plug that into G. The point we want to orient from is 0, 0, 0. But just to be parametric about it, we're going to go and plug this one into here. The direction, um, the reference direction that we're going from is actually this Y value. I might just pull this up here so it's a little bit um, easier to read. So we're going to pull that Y into the reference direction. Um, and then we need to have a target point. So our target points are those two endpoints. You can already see we're getting a bit of geometry oriented right now by default. So we're going to have our target points here. And we're going to have our target's directions, which are going to be here and here. And we've got a bit of an issue. So what um, Grasshopper is doing right now is it is reading um, the way we've set up this component. Um, it thinks we're saying that we want to orient this line onto the end of itself and this line onto the end of itself. But what we actually want to do is we want to um, orient both of those lines onto the end of itself. So what we could do instead is we could create a group component and we could dump those two lines into this instead um, like so and then plug that into G and then we will get um, our two lines oriented onto the end of um, these curves. There is still a little bit of an issue going on here though. Um, if you were to go and measure these lines um, that we've created you would notice that this one's actually a lot bigger than this one. Um, and we can even do that through a length. What, would, what we would be expecting here if we'd done this correctly would be um, a, um, continuous a continuous scaling where these things actually don't change in scale. But what's happening... Oops, that's not working very well. Oh, we need to ungroup. Just quickly ungroup. The issue we're having is um, that we're getting varying lengths. We should only have two types of lengths going, and they should be the same length as the original curves. We're getting all these different lengths, and the reason being is that the orient direction component actually scales your geometry based on the strength of your vector. So the length of this vector actually has a scaling effect on the geometry I've created. So because they're both both these vectors are smaller than zero, uh, smaller than one, they're having a um, scaling down effect on each of these. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to uh, unitize these vectors before they come into this uh, little vector component. So we'll just hold down shift and put that in. And now if I were to do an ungroup 
component and then find the length of those curves, we'll find that we have consistent values. Yes, so we've got two curves that are of 1.08 length and two curves that are at 0 0.74, uh, which is what we're after. So now what we want to do, um, or just to explain the logic um, for you again, we're orienting from this vector to a new vector that's going out here, which we can actually visualize um, from this point. Ooh, no, from this point. And then I'll do a copy here. So we're kind of seeing um, what's happening here. We've got this vector and these two lines, and then we're orienting it all based on this vector again, so that they all orient in the same direction based on these normals. So I'm just going to turn off those vector previews. So now what we'd like to do is we'd like to iterate this over and over. Um, you could, if you wanted to, um, go and create some kind of um, loop using anem anemone. I'm not going to demonstrate that in this tutorial because I think you can go and have a look at some of the other anemone tutorials and see if you can figure it out yourself. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a look at um, something called the transform component in Grasshopper and we're going to use this in a couple of the next tutorials. And What we're going to do is we're going to um, use what this X is here which is the transformation data to iteratively, yeah, iteratively transform our tree. So when you create a transformation using some tools from the transformation tab, what most of these things do is, I'm sure it's the same with the scale, is they give you a little X output and it basically, it's good to view it through the, through the scale actually, it tells you um, or it stores within Grasshopper the um, transformation that has been operated on a certain kind of geometry or a certain component. So within this component a transformation has happened. Uh, in this case we're scaling by a factor of 0.5 so the transformation saves that as a scale of 0.5. Uh, in this one it's a little bit more complicated, we've got a few transformations going on but it's stored all of that data. So we could actually go ahead and um, we could just use a transformation um, component to transform this geometry via this transformation. We do have a little bit of an issue. It isn't getting a couple of branches we want. So what we want to do is we want to graft this transformation like that. Um, so then we're making sure that our groups that are going in are going to both of um, the branches on this list. And then we could kind of iterate this again. Um, grafting like that. Oh, the, oh wait, hang on. What have I done wrong here? I think I wanted to graft the group instead. Um, so we've got to make sure that we graft the um, base geometry, sorry, and not the transform data, because we want to iterate through all of the um, geometries. So basically what we're doing is we're putting everything on its own branch in a tree. Um, so they all have their own list container, and then they're all getting transformed by both of those transformations. And then you can simply copy this um, transformation as many times as you want. You could even set your loop up doing um, just using the transformation. And what's really powerful about this definition that we've set up, if I go and preview off a bit of this stuff, um, I'm going to leave the group on, I preview that off, is we can go back to our start of our definition and start changing some of these values and the whole tree is going to update like this. And we could make it a three-dimensional tree in the z-value. So you can start to have a play around and create some interesting iterations using this um, kind of transformation method. And we'll use a similar transformation in the next tutorial series when we look at a little bit more um, complicated L system, we're going to try and infuse some of the logic we learned in the solids um, tutorials to uh, try and create a um, solid L system.